suit. But saying, oh, what I have said before, my child is yet a stranger in the world. Younger than she, our happy mother's maid. And too soon marred are those so early made. The earth has swallowed all my hopes but she. She is the hopeful lady of my earth. But woo her, gentle Paris. Get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part. And she agree within her scope of choice lies my consent and fair according voice. This night I hold an old accustomed feast whereto I have invited many a guest, such as I love, and you among the store. One more most welcome makes my number more. At my poor house look to behold this night, earth treading stars that make dark heaven light. Come, go with me. Go, Syrah. Trudge about, through fair Verona, find those persons out, whose names are written there, and to them say, My house, and welcome on their pleasure stay. Nurse, where's my daughter? Call her forth to me. This is the matter. Oh, nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Oh, nurse, come back again. I have remembered me. Thou's here, our counsel. Thou knowst my daughter's of a pretty age. <laughs> marry. That marry is the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? Well, think of marriage now. Thus then, in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. What say you? Can you love the gentleman? This night you shall behold him at our feast. Read o'er the volume of young Paris' face and find delight writ there with beauty's pen. Examine every married lineament and see how one another lends content. And what obscured in this fair volume lies, find written in the margin of his eyes. This precious book of love, this unbound lover, to beautify him, only lacks a cover. That book in many's eyes doth share the glory that in gold clasps locks in the golden story. So shall you share all that he doth possess by having him making yourself no less. Things have fallen out, sir, so unluckily that we have had no time to move our daughter. Look you, she loved her kinsman Tybalt dearly, and so did I. Well, we were born to die. Sir Paris, I will make a desperate tender of my child's love. I think she will be ruled in all respects by me. Nay more, I doubt it not. On Thursday let it be. On Thursday tell her. She shall be married to this noble earl. Will you be ready? Do you like this haste? We'll have no great ado. A friend or two, for... Hark you, Tybalt being slain so late. It may be thought we held him carelessly. But what say you to Thursday? Why, how now, Juliet? What, ever more weeping for your cousin's death? What, wilt thou wash him from his grave with tears? And if thou couldst, thou couldst not make him live. Thou weeps not so much for his death, as that the villain lives which slaughtered him. Well, that same villain, Romeo, we will have vengeance for it, fear thou not. And then I hope thou wilt be satisfied. Okay. Day, night, hour, tide, time, work, play, alone, in company, still my care hath been to have you matched. And having now provided a gentleman of noble parentage, of fair domain, youthful and nobly trained, stuffed, as they say, with honorable parts, proportioned, as one's thought would wish a man, and then to have a wretched puling fool, a whining mammet in her fortune's tender, to answer, I'll not wed, I cannot love, I am too young, I pray you pardon me. But if you will not wed, I'll pardon you. Graze where you will, you shall not house with me. Look to it, think on it. I do not use to jest. Thursday is near, lay hand on heart, advise, and you be mine. I'll give you to my friend, and you be not. Hang, beg, starve, die in the streets, for by my soul I'll ne'er acknowledge thee, nor what is mine shall never do thee good. Trust to it, bethink you. I'll not be forsworn. <laughs> 